The Earth is facing a critical challenge, the loss of its green spaces. According to the United Nations, 41% of the Earth's surface is already desert, and an additional 40% is threatened by desertification. Imagine a world with no water, barren landscapes, and no place for life. But in China, one man, Wang Wenbao, embarked on a remarkable journey, taking bold and intelligent action to combat this very problem. Over 30 years, he planted over 300 million willow trees, released 4.5 million rabbits, and installed 196,000 solar panels in the shape of a giant horse right in the middle of the desert. This project earned recognition from the United Nations as a global model for desertification control. This is an honor previously achieved by only a select few, including Uzbekistan. So who is this man behind this incredible transformation? How could rabbits possibly save a desert? Let's explore the answers together. We're talking about the Kabuki Desert, the seventh largest desert in China, stretching over 7,200 square miles, an area roughly the size of Massachusetts. Located in northern China, the climate is incredibly harsh, making it unsuitable for both people and plants. Winters are brutal, with icy winds and temperatures plummeting to minus 4 Fahrenheit, feeling like knives on your skin, while summers are scorching, burning the ground. But this wasn't always a desert. Decades ago, the Kabuki Desert was once farmland, dotted with thriving villages, flowing rivers and lush grasslands. But a dramatic shift occurred when the winds grew stronger and the grass began to disappear. Desertification took hold. Sand began to move, relentlessly swallowing houses and roads. Villagers were forced to abandon their homes, leaving everything behind. In just a few decades, the Kabuki Desert expanded eastward by more than 25 miles, burying thousands of acres of farmland under massive sand dunes, some reaching up to 200 feet high. In the 1950s and 60s, the Chinese government initiated large-scale anti-desertification campaigns, constructing windbreak forests, banning livestock grazing, and digging deep wells. However, these efforts proved unsuccessful. The problem was more complex than initially understood. The desert continued its relentless advance. But China is known for its ingenuity and its ability to find solutions, and a smart solution would eventually emerge. Wang Wenbao, a man known locally as the Desert King, stepped forward to lead the charge. But he wasn't born into wealth or privilege. He was once a poor teacher in Inner Mongolia, biking over six miles through the sand every day to reach his classroom. Battling strong winds that half buried his bike in sand that filled his lungs, he made a bold declaration. If I can't escape the desert, I'll make it pay rent. Starting with nothing, Wang Wenbao poured his savings and borrowed money to pursue an idea others wouldn't dare to attempt. In 1988, with a small salt company, he began his experiment, investing millions to build windbreaks, plant over 50 million willow trees, and reclaim 1,400 square miles of barren land. People called him crazy, and authorities dismissed him as a dreamer, but he persevered, living among the sand, meticulously measuring every bit of moisture. The wildest part? Bringing rabbits into the desert. Over 4 million Rex rabbits now inhabit this arid landscape. These aren't just any rabbits. They are French-bred Rex rabbits, known as the white gold of the fur industry. Their fur is incredibly soft and smooth, lacking guard hairs, so it doesn't need shaving or plucking after tanning. A high-quality Rex pelt can fetch nearly $30, while raising one costs only about $2. China now dominates the Rex rabbit fur market, holding over 80% of the world's share. Each female rabbit can produce 25 litters a year, yielding 200 to 300 kits, with a remarkable survival rate of up to 96%, even in hot, dry climates. They consume little water, eat dry grass, and reproduce normally, even in freezing temperatures. And these rabbits aren't simply released into the wild. They live in closed-loop eco-farms. Their meat is used for food, their fur for clothing, their organs for traditional medicine, and their manure becomes a valuable resource. Rabbit manure is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, essential nutrients that desert sand lacks. It transforms the sand into moist humus, creating the first brown soil in centuries. Rex rabbits can't digest grass seeds, meaning that every time they do their business, they're planting seeds with natural fertilizer. This brings us back to the willow trees. Willow trees can thrive in dry conditions. Wang Wenbao understood that for the rabbits to survive, they needed food and shade. Willow trees can survive in dry places. Their roots can extend over 300 feet deep, tapping into underground water and holding the sand in place. Young willow shoots became food for the Rex rabbits. 
The rabbits, in turn, leave nutrient-rich manure around the willows. The trees feed the rabbits, the rabbits feed the soil, and the soil feeds the trees, forming a closed ecological loop. Scientists estimate that each acre in this willow rabbit model can produce over five tons of organic humus per year, transforming sand into farmland in just three to five years. In a decade, over 300 million willows were planted, creating a green wall, reducing wind speeds by 90%, and holding back over 15 million tons of sand each year. Wang Wenbao transformed over 7,200 square miles of desert into a giant laboratory for ecological economics. He hired bulldozers and workers, working tirelessly to flatten sand dunes and construct windbreak fences. In just five years, over 1,200 square miles of desert were turned green. Millions of willows flourished, millions of rabbits multiplied, and thousands of families returned to their hometowns, once devastated by sandstorms. In just 10 years, the Dilod Banner area boasted 4.5 million Rex rabbits, generating $76 million and helping over 10,000 families escape poverty. Wang Wenbao then brought solar energy into the desert's heart. He built the Junma Solar Power Plant, a massive project with 196,000 solar panels arranged in the shape of a galloping horse. This is the largest energy artwork in the world, recognized by Guinness World Records. Junma produces 2.3 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually, powering over 400,000 people. The panels also reduce wind speeds by up to 50%, creating shade for grass to grow underneath, where rabbits, sheep, and geese are released for biological mowing. The soil is stabilized, sand no longer blows away, and a new ecosystem forms under the solar panels. By 2022, Junma had saved over 760,000 tons of coal, cutting 1.85 million tons of carbon dioxide, equivalent to planting over 80 million trees. In four years, the area around the plant turned over 2,600 acres into a green energy oasis. Wang Wenbao created a closed value chain, meat, fur, manure, biogas, tourism, and solar energy. From 2010 to 2020, Kabuki's ecological economy generated over $10 billion, becoming Asia's most profitable green model. After decades of battling the sand, nature responded. A 2023 report revealed a quadrupling of wild deer, desert foxes, and migratory birds in Kabuki since 1990. Species that had vanished reappeared in fields once filled with sand and bones. Groundwater rose by an average of 5 to 6.5 feet in just 20 years. Over 100 native plant species returned, creating a landscape once deemed impossible golden sand mixed with green grass and small patches of forest. The soil is no longer carried away by the wind and holds the earthy smell of life. Let's fly 4,000 miles south to Australia, where this very animal caused one of the worst ecological disasters in human history. In the mid-19th century, 24 European rabbits were brought over for hunting. Within 50 years, the rabbit population exploded to over 1 billion, devouring grass, destroying roots, and turning nearly two-thirds of Australia's plains into desert. The Australian government tried everything to control them, building fences, releasing viruses, and mass killings, but nothing worked. So, why are rabbits monsters in Australia but saviors in China? The difference lies in how people act. In Kubuki, Rex rabbits are never released into the wild. They are part of a closed-loop ecosystem, strictly managed, eating willows, producing manure, enriching the soil, and generating profit. Despite the impressive numbers and beautiful scenery, Kabuki faces controversies. Some environmentalists argue that the rabbit desert model is just a small part of the ENN group's economic ecosystem. They claim that Chinese media exaggerates the role of rabbits and that government planning, investment, and advanced land management technology are the real keys to success. Experts worry that rapid expansion could create ecological pressures. Rabbit manure, if accumulated excessively, can cause nitrogen pollution, alter soil pH, and affect groundwater. Some pilot areas have even seen algae appear around natural fertilizer ponds. But despite the concerns, the United Nations recognizes Kubuki as a global model for desertification control. In 2011, it was recognized by the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. By 2019, it became a global land restoration demonstration center, internationally recognized as a standard for sustainable development in arid regions. Kubuki's story is spreading worldwide as a planetary regeneration formula. In Andalusia, southern Spain, 
facing one of the worst climate disasters. Rainfall has dropped by over 40% in just 30 years. The European Union reports that nearly 75% of Spain's land is threatened by desertification. Learning from the Kubuki model, the government launched the Andalusia Restoration Plan 2030. They are building the Mediterranean Green Wall, planting olive trees, acacias, and native grasses, and developing regenerative agriculture. Solar farm systems, modeled after Kabuki's agro-PV approach, are also emerging. From a land buried under sand, Kubuki has become a symbol of hope. People have learned to live in harmony with nature. If a desert in China can come back to life, what's stopping the rest of the world? Could this green miracle save our planet? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.